Hello and welcome to this update to Hairstrand Designer version 1.3. Now, there is still the issue of it saving files to the app data folder if you're saving to the same folder as the application. So make sure you save your files to a separate folder. Maybe it's on your desktop or something. As long as it's not in the same folder as the application, then you'll be fine. If you do that by accident, you can have a look in local app data and you might find it there, maybe in the local Hairstrand Designer. Uh, also, if you're generating uh, textures uh, uh, with a lot of strands, try to stick to generating just two or three maps at a time, maybe two at a time, just to stop the memory getting over kind of capacitated, which causes a crash. If you do have a crash, uh, you can come back and press F11 and it will give you most of your settings back. You might just have to regenerate your strands. So here we go. So what I've changed in this version is the ability to now move the strands around. If you hold down one, you'll see all these numbers come up that represent each key, uh, each set. So pressing one will allow me to use this little dial here to move, uh, to sort of gradually offset this clump of hair. Okay, so you can do that for each if you press two. So each of these numbers represents the top row of keys in your keyboard. So it's two, three, four, five. When you get to at 10, it's actually zero that you press. And I think there's room for one more set. So it goes up to 11 now. So if you press minus, just right of zero, I don't know your keyboard layout, but if you press minus, then you can control set 11. Okay, so that's the first couple of changes I've made. You can go all the way up and down with that. Um, let's see the other things that I've changed. I have added help info. So there's a few notes on some shortcut keys. These are all shortcut keys as well here that you can use. Um, just a couple of outliners about known issues as well. And um, just different things to do with optimization, which I'll show you right now. So the top right, you'll see frames per second and this OPT value. This is the optimization value. And if I just click help info again, that will take that away. So you can see if, uh, there's a maximum of 16 strands per set on display. Now there's actually 30 strands in set one, 27 in set two, 24 in set three, and so on. These numbers represent the numbers of strands and these for real. Um, and in order to see these, you can use the mouse wheel up and you'll see them roughly in a, a kind of random state, the way they're going to end up being generated. Uh, they're not going to be exact one-to-one -one from the generated maps because the, when you generate, it actually internally randomizes each strand again. So you can't really see the end result, but that's where hair strand Designer 2 sort of resolves that problem. It's just because the algorithm here is completely different. Anyway, so I made these refinements to this one and you can see now you've got tapering for everything, but you can de-influence tapering with a slider. So you can take tapering off or even make it go the other way to make it wide if you wanted that. Uh, you've also got the algorithm, de-influence the algorithm so you don't get the waviness and some of the other things in there. You can even make it go the opposite way because you've got your, your ability to add your mixer and things like that in here. And if you didn't like the way the mixer was for each of these, you can press F8 and you can change some things about the mixer of each one. So up and down for each mixer so this one and this one can make it go more like that press enter to return so now you've got the ability to change the amount on each of these but bear in mind the tapering does kind of kill it a little bit so you can mess around with the tapering that's strand four. The tapering's quite high on that. So the tapering does affect 
these algorithms a fair bit. So these are just little fine tune controls that you might not even need, but they just help to make a little bit of variation. You've also got your variation here. And the other thing that I've added recently is thickness, minimum, maximum, uh, range, so that you get a nice kind of like tapering at the root and the tip. If I change the root tone here, you'll see that a little bit better. I just need to make it thicker. Change a bit of variation variance here so they get different thicknesses i'll just increase the minimum so we can see that a bit better now this display is a really optimized 1k resolution and the final one is 4k so you might want to just click on the map here and then generate and then let that generate and you'll see a truer version of how that's going to look so when i click here i can see pixel yeah, this pixel display here shows you exactly what is going to be generated and you can do that for each map so as I mentioned at the start I recommend just maybe generating two maps at a time the AO is especially hungry for uh, GPU so just be careful with that I tend to do AO on its own you can see it takes a long time as well so that's the mask that's a set based ID. Now you can change this to strand mode and it will ask to regenerate it. Okay, so back to Previewer. So I've got the help info added. Uh, we've got the usual frizziness here. Every time you press the button, you'll see the labels come up. If you hold down one, you can control offsets of each one. Optimizations, if you hold down control and mouse wheel, you can change the optimization number. That's what I was talking about earlier. So to make it kind of run faster, if you put optimization down lower, it actually affects the frame rate more because it's it's creating uh, smaller steps. So that think of this as a optimization step. And it's taking 13 pixel steps to make these strands. So if you do control and mouse wheel up, and make the optimization quite high. So we put it right up to the maximum, it goes to 64 because we don't want to lose too much. You can see how that looks, but we get a good bit of frame rate back. And then if you want more optimization, just mouse wheel on its own will bring down the maximum strands per set. And that's purely just for display. You can see as you reduce that though it gets it gets a bit harder to see some of these but it gives you a general idea of what you're going to get. And if you want to run at that frame rate for a while, then you know you can do that. Everything runs nice and smooth. And slowly you can get to the point where it is a bit more sluggish. If you've got a beefy machine, then you don't have to worry so much about this. This is more for kind of medium low end PCs. I know I'm running on a kind of medium spec low PC. And yeah. So you can mess around with these values, control mouse wheel down, and we'll get a little bit more definition. Play with variation, a bit more tapering. So I've de-influenced some parts. Oh, that's influenced that way. Okay. Now oh, that's the taper influence there. That's the algorithm. And then eventually, when you're happy with that, you can go ahead and generate. I'm going to generate these three maps. So we just click this and it will say generate and please wait. And then you can have a look at each map by clicking anywhere here. That's the mask, it's the color, it's the IDs and everything else. Normal map, generate. Every time you change an algorithm, it will kind of reset these back to like a, a need to be generated state. So RGB generate. Uh, so that's just to make sure that you don't end up with weird uh, inconsistencies between maps. So if I change the number of strands here, you can see these all change. Um, and that happens for every slider. 
I'm not sure if it happens for offsetting just yet. So if I was to generate a couple of these, I could make this change before submitting, but this video was being created just before submitting here. Let's see, so we've got our mask map, color map, and I'm gonna press one. Now we need to go back to the previewer, so I'm gonna make it so that when you press these keys, it takes you back automatically. Press one. Yeah, you can see that it's not registered that there's been a change. So I'm gonna fix that before this push, but this is basically the new update. And uh, I've got it so it loads and saves these offsets as well. So if we save a test here, and then if I load it back up, hopefully it's not, yeah, it's not any different. So that's good. Press F6, you can reset. And again, I'm gonna load that just to make sure. Yeah, so everything's working there. Uh, you can load in the image of any kind into the backdrop. Just make sure if you do load an image that it is 8-bit and a PNG. It might not like 16-bit PNGs. It tends to crop it for some reason or not scale it correctly. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hope you like Hair Strand Designer 1.3. Um, I will be just working on bug fixes from now on with this because I really need to move on with Hair Strand Designer 2 because the algorithm's a bit stronger, but it's got its own optimization issues that I need to fix as well. But yep, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.